Hi, this is Marcia, and today we're talking about keeping track of the data. Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining. I've been sharing out some of my favorite activities I did over the summer in my conference sessions and in my workshops. So today I'm talking about how to keep track of all the data. And this was a big activity that the teachers really liked because sometimes it's just the, oh, I can do that kind of moment that hit home the most. So one of the things I talked about the teachers is that when you keep a track of the data, one of the things you really want to work on and think about is keeping things offline, especially when you're doing formative and observation data. The reason is that if you keep it offline, you're going to be more willing and able to keep track of it in the moment. Don't have to put it into the grade book. This is not for a grade. These are just things that you're going to be keeping track of. Do they get it or do they not? So I tell my teachers to grab a fun clipboard, and yes, we even add some little fun frills to it just to hide the names, and then just to have that clipboard with you when you're working through this activity. So what I'm going to do now, oh, so one of the things before we showed them how to do it is I went through and I found a bunch of different teacher data trackers, examples from classrooms, and we taught how to sort it out, what do they like, what don't they like. Ways that you keep track of data is completely up to you. These are just examples. So we went through, we sorted out different examples of teacher data trackers. And then we talked about one of my favorites and what that looks like, which is what I'm going to showcase to you now. Okay, so over here to the side, I have an example of a teacher data tracker that I use quite a bit to get my teachers going. Now, this is just an example. You don't have to use mine. That's what I say to them. This is just an example. This is how I do it. Where what I do is I look at my week and I look to see you inside of my pacing guide or inside of my teacher notes. It will tell me what different takes our standards I'm going to be teaching for that day. So then I just write it down. Like on day one, I cover three different standards. So I write that down. When I'm working with the students, I just go through, did they get it or did they not? That's easy. I don't have to go crazy. I'm just keeping track of my conversations in my small group, whole group, or even just observation data. That's one example. Another example that I do is that I go through and I really look to see, like within this first six weeks, I do my different colors because I want to make sure that if I hit 5-1-A, I can see again where 5-1-A pops up again. By the time I come to my sixth day, I have now taught that standard twice. So this would be a good opportunity for a small group instruction day. Hmm, something fun. One last thing that I showcase to my teachers is another idea. If you are like a geography teacher or a science teacher and, or a language arts teacher, you repeat your standards all the time. Well, then think about having one page for your standards that you're doing within that nine weeks. Every time you teach that standard, you can just have that date across the top. So I'd have a whole stack of these for Eve every class. However you decide to set up your teacher data tracker, it's up to you. But man, keeping track of the data in the moment is going to really help to differentiate those small groups. This again was part of our workshop called Data Driven Small Groups Made Easy. And one of the easiest ways to use this is through a teacher data tracker.